Hi again, everyone. My name is Joey, and today we're going to learn how to draw a fox. Foxes are known for being really smart, friendly, curious, and crafty. And that reminds me of my friend Alice. Today, Alice is going to walk us through a step-by-step -step drawing tutorial where we're going to learn how to draw the sleepy fox and its cub. Today, we're featuring our fantastic Sculpt-A-Fox Ditto Oven Bake Clay Kit. Each kit comes with four pieces of Ditto Oven Bake Clay and printed instructions. You could make one to two orange foxes, depending on how big you make them, and with your leftover clay, you could choose to make a pink or a gray fox. You can add a five-piece set of Ditto tools to your order for $4.99. They're really good for details and for getting into those little nooks and crannies. You can purchase your Sculpt-A-Fox kit and Ditto tools on 25cats.com. If you live near a studio, you can check to see if they have them in stock. And good news, we have a contest. You can enter to win a Ditto Sculpt-A-Fox kit. All you need to do is leave a comment below and tell us your favorite fox fact. Alice is ready to get started. Have fun everyone and I will see you next video. Bye! Hello, for this video we are going to need an eraser and we're going to need a pencil. We're going to need if you have one, a blending stump. This is to smudge the pencil. If you don't have one of these, you can use your finger or you can use a cotton swab like this. Um, and we're gonna need a black pen. I'm gonna be using this black fine liner pen, but again, any pen will do. And we're also gonna need some masking tape. All right, before we get started, let's talk for a second about pencils. So you'll notice that on my pencil right here, there's a little letter B. Now the B means that this is a soft pencil and that it's a light pencil. So I'll show you what I mean. If I press very lightly, I get this light gray tone. And if I press harder, I get a much darker color. This pencil I have right here says 8B. Now the bigger the number in front of the B, the darker the pencil. So again, if I press very lightly, you'll see that even when I'm pressing super gently, this is much darker than my B pencil. And when I press hard, it's darker than when I press hard with my B pencil. So if you do have a pack of sketch pencils, you can use a dark pencil and a light pencil for this project. If you just have the one pencil, it might say B, H, B, or 2B on it. Um, that's going to be fine as well, but you are going to need to um, practice your gentle colouring and shading and your slightly harder press, like this. And even better, we're going to have a little practice where we go very, very, very gently. And I'm going to move my pencil this way across my page and I'm going to start pressing a bit harder and then a little bit harder and then a little bit harder like this until I'm pressing as hard as I can. Now the way that this fades from being light to dark is called a gradient and we're going to use this to make some cool 3D shading effects in our drawing today. The, ben the blending stamp I'm going to quickly show you what that does as well. My blending stump, it's just made from cardboard. You can actually make these yourself as well. Uh, but like I say, a cotton swab will do the job as well. We are just gonna rub this over. You see how it makes it go softer here. I can see the texture of the paper and I can also see the direction of my scribbles when I was drawing. But by rubbing over it with my blending stamp, it becomes much softer. And the tip of my blending stamp has also kind of stained a little bit with the graphite from the pencil. I can use this if I now rub over here, I can make some very, very light pencil marks. And if I drag this, just like we did here with our pencil across, 
I can make this pencil fade away into the white. It's kind of a nice effect. If I run over here, I can see I can make this even lighter than I can get with my pencil. And if I rub this all the way across, you'll see this really nice effect where it really starts to fade together and you can't really tell where I started pressing harder or softer with my pencil. Okay, now we've had a little bit of a practice with our pencil. I'll just show you what I can do with this as well. It's the same kind of thing. We can press just like this. You see how it goes softer? And you can also do the same thing with your finger like this. Okay. I can also take my eraser and I can get some cool effects by erasing little bits of my pencil like this. So these are all things that we're going to use in our drawing today. All right. The pen will be used for outlining right at the end, so I'm going to put that to one side for now. And the first thing I'm going to take is my tape. And we're going to use the tape to mark off an area of our paper where we're going to put our drawing. So I'm going to find the end. And I'm going to make a square or, well, actually a rectangle. So I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to place it around about here. And I'm going to take another one. We can just tear the ends. We don't need them to be neat for this. We're going to pull this tape off at the end of our drawing. And I'm going to put this here. So I want about the same distance here and here, but it doesn't have to be precise. Okay. And now I'm going to tape right here. Again, going for the same sort of distance. This is going to be a little bit narrower, that's fine. And my last piece will go over here. Okay. Now I've got this area here, which is where I'm going to put my drawing, so I'm just going to make sure that I've got this pressed down nicely. All right and we're ready to get started. So I'm going to take my B pencil, my light pencil, and I'm gonna sketch out the shapes and I'm gonna press very lightly for this. Okay, I'm gonna start by drawing the nose of the mum fox, so. I'm gonna put it right here and this is, it's sort of in the middle in this direction. So it's in the middle of here. And it's a little bit to the right. Okay, tiny circle. Then I'm gonna draw from this circle, from one side, I'm gonna draw this sort of arch. And again from the other side. And I'm going to draw a straight line, joining it up here and joining it up here from the nose to the tip of my arch. Now from this side to this side, I'm going to draw another arch, draw a rainbow type shape. I'm going to draw two triangles right here. And these are going to be the fox's ears. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a bit of an oval, but not a complete oval. So I'm going to start my pencil right here 
on this bottom almost corner of the fox's ear and I like to give myself some little guidelines so if you've ever done a join the dots kind of a drawing game it's that type of thing so I'm going to put a dot here this is where my line's going to start and I want my line to go all the way over to here down to about here and we're going to go all the way down to about here okay this helps me to plan where my lines are going to go so that I fill this space ni nicely so that my fox isn't maybe really small up in one corner and these are going to be rounded lines like this This one's slightly straighter, but then it curls around at the end. And this line is again going to be slightly arched and I'm pressing really, really lightly. So if I do make this mistake, it's no big deal. I can erase it. There we go. Okay, good. Now, this tip here is going to be the tip of this fox's tail. And I'm going to give myself a dot diagonally to this one here this is where the fox's tail is gonna is gonna end and I'm gonna draw one more arch shape all the way down to a point right here okay now it's time to do the baby fox so Okay, I'm going to draw the baby fox now. So I'm going to start with the nose and he's going to be down here using this tail as a pillow. So I'm going to start by drawing the nose, which is a tiny circle. Then we're going to do the same shape as we did for the fox's head up here, but it's going to be a little bit smaller because this is a baby fox. It's a smaller fox. So we're going to go just like we did here. And we're going to draw these two arches so one here and one here i'm going to check and make sure that this is smaller than this one i think perhaps we can make this arch here a tiny bit smaller that's why we're pressing lightly with our pencil okay and then i'm going to erase this line right here because i don't want it to look like the tail is going through this fox's head now just like we did here i'm going to join up my arches to the nose i'm going to draw this arch here and my triangles for ears And I'll join these lines up to the side of the face here. Okay, now I'm going to draw a little zigzag type line from about here. And this is going to be for the tip of this fox's tail because we know the tips of fox's tails are white. There we go. It's sort of like the letter Z or a zigzag, lots of spiky lines to join that up. Now it's time to draw the baby fox's body. Okay, so I'm going to draw an arch starting from almost this corner where the ear meets the head, but just along the head a little bit. And this is going to go. So all the way around, almost like we're going to draw a spiral. Do you see how this line touches this line right here? And we'll do a little zigzag for this tail too. Now up here we're going to draw the mum fox's paws. So we're going to draw... A line here for the body and 
and then actually maybe we won't draw paws i think we'll leave it like that that's kind of cute <laughs> a bit more round <laughs> okay now it's time to start doing some shading so we haven't drawn any details yet like eyes or whiskers we're gonna leave those until the very end so I'm gonna take my pencil and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some shading where the darker parts of my image are going to be. So those are going to be the places where you find shadows. So those places are going to be, and if you're using your darker um, 8B or your darker pencil for this point, you can totally switch to that. And I'll tell you when to switch back. Otherwise, if you're just using one pencil like me, this is where we're going to press a little bit harder than we have been so far. So right in here, I'm going to color in. Right in between the little baby fox's face and the fox's tail over here. And then, if we remember when we we were pressing we're going to press hard and we're going to get softer and softer and softer and softer and softer pressing gently and gently and gently to get that gradient effect that's what we're going to do right here so i've been pressing quite hard here and now i'm just gonna go gentle 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 like this so by the time we get to the tip of the tail here we should be pressing super lightly okay the next place that we're going to do this is just here by this tail this little bit down here so i'm going to press a little bit harder and i'm going to get lighter and lighter and lighter i'm going to do it along this tail here but this time I'm not pressing super hard. I'm I'm still pressing quite lightly with my shading and getting lighter and lighter and lighter. Okay. Now we're gonna add a little shadow underneath the baby fox's face. And this time, because this part of the tail is going to be white, I want this shadow, I'm actually only gonna press really lightly very very gently because I don't want it to be really dark and now when I get on this side of my zigzag this is the part of the fox that would be orange right if we were doing this in color so now I can press slightly harder because shadows on light things don't look as dark as when they're on something that's a little bit darker and this little corner here I'm gonna just do the same thing okay looking good so far all right now this line here this is where the tail tucks in so I'm gonna do the same thing here I'm gonna press slightly harder and then I'm gonna get lighter and lighter and lighter I'm going to do this in a few little sections here. So I'm going to do this end and now I'm going to do this end. Don't want to accidentally go over this ear here. So I'll be really careful when I get to that part. Okay, good. Now there's also going to be some shadows at the bottom here. So I'm going to press quite lightly sort of medium pressure. So not too hard, not too light. I'm going to go all along here until the zigzag and then I'm going to stop. 
and then I'm going to get lighter and lighter with pressing. So I've got a tiny bit of a gradient, just coming up a tiny bit. Now, when I do this tip of the tail, remember we want to be extra gentle and extra light with how much, how hard we're pressing our pencil. So I'm going to go really softly. Like this. And for the baby's tail here, I'm going to go hard on this little bit between their two tails here. And then I'm just going to go sort of medium again, pressing medium hard around the edge. Just until I get to about here. So if you imagine they're sitting on the ground, this is kind of where the ground is going to stop. Now, if it helps, we can, we can draw ourselves some ground. So something that they're lying on. So I'm going to draw a little line that goes from about here down and from about the same place over here and down like they're on a little hill okay and then I can go back to my shading I'm gonna press lighter lighter All right, the next place we're gonna do some shading is gonna be um, underneath the fox's face right here. So underneath this side of the face, I'm gonna think about the fact that this fox has a white tummy. So I'm gonna draw a line from about if we think of this as like a semicircle or a sort of a pointy leaf shape, about halfway along this line here, I'm going to draw a line all the way down to about here. So this is going to be the mum fox's tummy and it's going to be white. So we remember from down here that we want to press really lightly for any shading. So very gentle. And same here, very gentle on this side too. And I'm going to do just behind where the baby fox is as well. Very gentle, super, super light shading. There we go. Okay, now right here, I can get a little bit darker. Just like here, when we got onto this part, we can press slightly dark, uh, harder and get lighter all the way up here okay i'm gonna do a tiny bit more a very light gentle shading behind here And I'm going to do the tiniest bit right here. Now, this is also going to be white, so we want to do the very gentle shading just on this bottom line. And same with the baby fox's ears, too. Okay. we're going to draw um, some clouds in the background so the way we're going to draw there's so many different kinds of ways you can draw clouds today we're going to draw them by doing a straight line and then we're going to do lots of m shapes and if we imagine a semicircle shape or an arch that goes along here that's what we're going to be doing we're going to be going up like this and down like this now you can do as many clouds as you like i'm gonna do some bigger ones at the top and then as they get down here i'm gonna make my clouds slightly smaller 
and I'm pressing very gently again. It looks nice if they're not all in a, in a straight line as well, so I'm going to make this one a little bit lower than my first cloud. Now I don't want to draw this line through the fox's ear, so I'm going to stop and carry on on the other side like this. Maybe one that goes off the side, so I'm going to draw half a cloud. There we go. Okay. Now. It's night time, these are sleepy foxes, they're, they're sleeping. Um, I want it to be kind of like it's just becoming night time. So I'm going to colour in the sky and I'm going to press quite hard. Now the key when you're colouring in a big bit of space like this with a pencil is you, you don't want to um, have all your pencil lines looking too scribbly. You kind of want them all to be going in the same direction. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to start on this side because I'm right-handed and I don't want to smudge my drawing. I like to put my hand across the top like this. Or you can put a piece of paper and lean on that so you don't smudge your drawing. So I'm going to have all my pencil lines going this way, left and right, or horizontally, if, if you want to use that word. We're going to go only left and right with my with my pencil lines. When I get to the cloud, I'm going to stop because I don't want that to be this color. We can draw over the masking tape. That's why it's there. It's, it's going to give us a really nice straight line around our drawing when we're done. Now you'll see when my lines overlapped, it looks slightly darker. We don't need to worry too much about that, but you can also just be mindful of that and think about it. So when you're coloring, you don't want to overlap your lines too much. Now, when I get to the edge of my fox, I that's the only time I'm going to change direction because I, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a pencil outline here because I don't want to accidentally scribble over my fox. Same with my clouds. I'm going to slow down and I'm going to be really careful when I go around the edge of those.
Okay, now what we're gonna do for the ground is we're gonna draw a little pattern. So we're gonna draw lots of little scribbles like this and we're pressing quite hard. So we're gonna start at the bottom and they don't have to be neat or anything like that. We're just gonna go along like this. And again, we're gonna fill up this whole space. Now my next one, I want it to be above, but in between the ones below. Okay, and we're gonna keep doing that as we go up. Now you'll notice, you might notice that you're getting some uh, pencil on your hand. Um, that's okay, you can use a piece of paper to stop you from smudging it, or you can just, um, if you see here, I've got a little bit of pencil when we're done, we can just erase it like this. So it's no big deal. I like to use my little finger as kind of like a little prop like this, so that I don't have to actually touch the paper. It's like a little walking stick. And that way you're not trying to just hold by the wrist. Okay, now I'm ready to switch up my pencil for my blending stamp or your finger or your cotton swab, whatever you might be using. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is on my spare piece of paper, I want to check to see, because I know that I've used this before on pencil, how dark it's going to be. And I just want to rub off any extra graphite that might be on that. So now this is very light. I'm going to start with the lightest part of my picture, which is going to be the white parts of my foxes. And I'm going to do tiny little circles like this. I'm going to draw, when I get to the line, I'm going to switch and do a line. Then I'm going to do tiny little circles up. Now, do you see how that looks way softer than this here? I'm going to do the same again. So I'll start with a line and then I'm going to do lots of little tiny circles to make it softer and work my way up inside the ear there. It's a good idea every now and then to just scribble this, your cotton bud or your blending stamp or your finger if that's what you're using so that it doesn't get too dark. Okay, let's do that again down here. Okay, wipe off any excess. And the other parts that are going to be white are the tips of the tail and the cheeks. So, first I'm going to do the cheeks. So, I'm just going to really roughly outline. You, you can barely see it, that's good, that's what we want. The arches here. On both. And the tail, I'm gonna start at this zigzag part here. And then we'll go down here. So, start off going in a straight line and then we'll switch to those tiny circles and 
we're gonna start pressing hard just like we did the pencil get lighter and lighter and lighter so that it fades up in a gradient same under here I'll start off by sort of outlining and then we'll do tiny light circles If you feel like this is getting a little bit dark, don't worry about it. We're going to use our eraser at the end for our highlights. Again, I'm going to get rid of any excess graphite on my blending sump. And my last little white patch is down here. Okay. Next, I'm going to start doing the shading on my fox's body. So let's start over here. I'm going to start by going along the edge. And just following the line. And then I'm going to start coming up. I'm still pressing quite hard right now. Okay, and now I'm going to blend up. Still going in that same direction, following the shape of the fox. Now, as soon as it starts to get so you can barely see it, that's when we want to start switching to those tiny circles again. Because otherwise we can end up seeing the lines like this. That's not what we're going for. Okay, come onto here. Now let's do this little bit of shading here above this tail. So again, I'm going to start by following my outline. I don't want to accidentally go over the baby fox's ear. Okay, now I'm going to add a little shadow here, pressing quite hard, getting lighter and lighter. Let's spread that out too. Now remember this part here is white, so we're gonna go really gentle right here. Following the edge and then going into our tiny little circles. Okay, now we're going to take our B pencil 
and really gently like the lightest you've you've ever drawn we're gonna we're just gonna um add some more pencil for us to blend around we want all of the fox's orange parts to be to have this kind of effect so for example here there's no dark shading but we do want it to just look slightly darker so that we know this part is orange so really gently and keeping my pencil lines all in the same direction i'm just going to add some pencil to this area and i'm going to do the same for the heads as well just for the parts that would be orange very gently and then i'll go back in with my blending stump starting with the edge and then going into little circles so it looks soft Now it's time to take a look at our background. So I'm gonna just go over all of my dark sky with my blending stamp to soften it out so that you can't see the pencil lines. So again, I'm gonna think about the direction that I'm moving my blending stamp in. I'm gonna try to keep it either this way, side to side, horizontally, or in my little circles, unless I'm outlining. So for example, right here, I'm gonna outline the back of my fox. And I'm gonna outline underneath this cloud. And then I'm gonna go back to my horizontal and my tiny circles. And this is gonna disguise any pencil lines so that this just looks like it's, it's soft and even. Again, remember, we can go over the masking tape.
Just gonna give a little extra definition to the clouds. That means I'm gonna make the shapes, these sort of M shapes stand out a little bit more by just rubbing my bending stump in between each one to separate them a little bit. Okay, my sky is done. Now for the ground. So for the ground, I'm gonna do a very quick and gentle uh, run over it with my blending stump. And this time I'm only gonna go left and right. So left and right like this. And if it looks kind of scrib scribbly, I don't mind because that's the effect that we're going for. So left and right, left and right, only left and right. even when I'm outlining. Until we can't see any white spots. And you'll see that it's picking up the, the graphite, the pencil from these little shapes that we added and it's spreading them about and it's making those lines that we made look a bit softer and they fade a little bit in some parts into the background that's kind of nice and this just gives us some texture for the ground but it's a little bit abstract so you can use your imagination whether they're lying on grass or something completely different just suggests that there's something there that they're lying on. Okay, now I'm gonna just go underneath my fox and I just wanna make sure that I've got some nice definition on this line so I'm literally just going to go over the top of it where the fox ends and the ground starts with my bending stump and I'm going to do the same thing where my fox meets the sky All right, what we're going to do next is we're going to take our eraser and we're just going to go over some of the highlights. So first of all, there are some parts of my picture that I want to be white. And one of those things is the clouds. So you can see right here, we have a few little smudgy parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tip of my eraser very carefully. I'm going to just erase any little bits of pencil that made their way onto my clouds. <sighs> and if you accidentally erase something you didn't mean to, you can just pop it back in. Not a problem. <sighs> You'll notice sometimes your eraser will, just like with the blending stump, pick up some graphite to get rid of that so that you don't accidentally smudge it like that. Add more pencil when we're trying to take pencil away. You can just find a piece of white paper and you can just rub your eraser on it until 
it's gone. And that way you're not gonna smudge your drone. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on my foxes. So I know that the inside of the ears, I'm just gonna go over the, the tips. And again, I'm actually not gonna use pencil, I'm gonna use my blending stump because I've got so much graphite on here. Cheeks, I'm just gonna do one line on each cheek. We still want this nice little shadow underneath the arch, but just in case there's any smudges on the lower parts of the cheek, we'll just give it a quick touch with the eraser. I'm gonna just highlight out the tail a little bit. So some of those, where those zigzag lines are. And finally the tummy on the on the box. I just want that to be a little bit brighter too. <sighs> Okay, now I'm going to tidy up the edges here where I've smudged some pencil. Now if you do have pencil on your hand like this, you might want to wash your hands right now so that you don't smudge it again. Get rid of all those little pieces of erased pencil. Okay. Now we're going to take our black pen and we're going to add our last few details and our outlines. So I'm going to start by outlining the clouds. So I'm just going to draw all way around the edge And now we'll outline the fox. So when I'm outlining my fox, I'm gonna start by going around the edge. The ears here. And when I go inside my ears, what I'm gonna do is I'm not going to join up this line here. So I'm going to draw the inside of the ears as separate little triangles like that. We'll go around these pencil lines here. And 
and I'm going to colour this nose in. Black. And right here, I'm going to draw two eyes, and these are like the letter U. And this is going to make our fox look sleepy. And then I'm going to draw one, two, three little whiskers inside here with two coming off the edge like that <laughs> so one two three inside and one two outside like this and then we'll outline the rest of our fox going to outline this line here where the ground meets the sky. Okay, now this is the fun part, we get to pull off the masking tape. So you want to do this slowly and pull it as close to the page as you can so that it doesn't tear any of your paper off. Do you see this really nice, straight, neat line that we have right here? Any last sneaky bits of pencil smudges you can see, we can get rid of those. fresh white border to contrast with our <laughs> we have our super cute little box pencil drawing 